Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I have an Intel Optane DC3700 from 2014, and I also have a little Western Digital Black SN850. Now, this is not the latest, newest model, but I think it's still a relatively current model here in March of 2025. The newer models aren't that much faster, but if we were to believe marketing specs and only marketing specs, this 2014 drive, well, just can't perform as well as this WD Black SN850. And the goal of marketing is to sell you this drive to put in your system, maybe for some gaming, you want some good speed for the files that are on it, but their use case in marketing isn't to sell you this for a ZFS use case. Specifically, what about if we want to do a CFS log device? Well, that's where there's a big difference between what marketing says and how these work. So I have a write-up that you can find down below if you just want to jump to the results. And let's get started on talking about the differences between these drives and using them in ZFS. And it really comes down to consumer drives versus well, non-consumer drives here. So let's get started. Before we jump to the write-up, I want to talk about the test setup I have here. This is TrueNAS Community Edition 25.04 RC1, the latest available version here in March of 2025. We go over here to our storage. We can see that this is a RAID Z2 7 wide, and I want to manage the devices. I can see them here there's no log device. So we're gonna go over here and we hit add VDEV, next. Next, because it's not data, specifically log, layout, choose Stripe. And we have the two drives in here. We have the Intel and the Western Digital. The Intel is a slightly smaller one here. And if you wanna add these, they can be added on the fly without modifying the data or stopping any of the services on TrueNAS. And the same thing goes for removing them. You can add them and remove them dynamically. So it makes the testing really easy because there's not even a reboot in between needed. We'll go ahead and add the Intel one, update the pool, confirm. And now that one's added to the list. If we look here, there's our single MVME added as a log device. Now for the testing, we're gonna go here to data sets, testing performance data set I created just for this test. And if we look at this data set, the sync always is turned on. Now to get more in depth, I have an entire another video dedicated to understanding how caching and log works inside of ZFS. So if you have a workload that requires syncing, then this is something that might be necessary. If you have a workload that does not, well, then you don't need this at all and you can stop watching here. Now, this is the write-up I have linked down below, and I covered the marketing aspects of these because this drive being released in 2014, the Intel SSD DCP3700 drive versus the WD Black SN850 MVME. Well, we have a PCI 3.0 versus 4.0, older protocol, and well, 2014 versus this was released around 2020. And as I said, there's newer drives, but they're not quite substantially faster, not compared to this, especially when you start looking at some of the performance metrics, sequential read, sequential writes, the WD Black just blows it out of the water, random read, 4K IOPS. And by the way, all this testing was done with 4K blocks. So I was simulating a workload of a lot of small writes, which is a common reason that you need commits, especially if it's something like a database where you need sync writes. And yeah, this is definitely spec for spec here, there's no way that this Intel could possibly perform better because as we run through all of these specs, there's really nothing to be concerned about until you get to the max Q depth. This is where there is a substantial difference between consumer drives and something like this Intel DCP3700. And the Q depth is not terrible for the WD Black, but that little nuance here, that small difference in all those other specs means there's a pretty substantial difference when it comes to the results. Now I use FIO directly on the TrueNAS system to get these results. Here's the exact command. So you can copy and paste and run this yourself. You can see exactly how I was using it. And one of the things I wanna highlight here is the number of jobs. And the reality is when you're setting these up, the number of jobs matters a lot because Q depth is how can it handle a lot of concurrent writes that are going to be coming at it? And specifically, if you're doing something, let's say a database application that you have over NFS and you need sync writes enabled, or you're doing some really high-end production VMs, and it's many of them, and you're using it across the data store, and you need full data integrity, you need those sync writes, it's a really important feature, and that means there's probably going to be a lot of them, especially if you have a larger enterprise system where there's maybe 100 VMs running. So 32 jobs in a block size of 4K for a bunch of small writes might be a realistic workload for something like this in an enterprise environment. 
But the difference is, though, even though, as I noted earlier, all the specs would tell you, if you were just reading the specs with the exception of that Q-depth, that we'll get a much faster performance than the WD Black. But the reality is we get 330 megs and 80K IOPS just on the random right for the Intel Optane as a log versus the 178 megs and only... 43,000 IOPS. So there's a pretty substantial difference here. And the same thing goes for sequential write. It's just a little bit faster. But yeah, there's definitely some noticeable performance differences here. And that's the problem people run into. And both drives are technically supporting high NVMe Q depths, 64K commands per Q times multiple Qs, but Intel's controller and firmware are tuned to make actual use of deep Qs efficiently. WD's SN850 controller, the SanDisk WD G2 is built for bursty I.O. and throughput, not sustained parallel workloads. So if you use this for your laptop and some games or your desktop and some games and, you know, the kind of use case that marketing sells that for, absolutely, it's going to be fast. You have some video file you have on there you want to load fast. going to work great. But when you're talking about thousands of consistent writes, well, it's just not going to work as well. And by the way, these are all the videos I have referenced in here because this was even a topic that recently me and Alan Jew talked about was people not understanding the Q depth of these consumer drives versus the enterprise ones. Now, I only focused on the ZFS log in this particular video, but if you're wondering if this applies elsewhere to other special VDEVs or even other file systems such as Ceph, the answer is yes. We have had people come to us who have built systems in well, non-optimal setups with a bunch of consumer drives and I'm wondering why they don't perform as well, including people who really want to do things like Proxmox along with Ceph because they want to have the hyper-converged file system with consumer drives and then can't believe the entire system crashed once they had like five or six VMs running and it wouldn't perform or sometimes would end up well, just not working at all because they've exceeded its Q depth. On a single drive, single use case, yeah, it does perform like the marketing says, but the reality is you didn't buy it for that. You bought a virtual machine to run many systems at once, and especially in the enterprise space, that's why these systems often have these specialized drives in them. It's not just because they're slapping the word enterprise and a bigger price tag. There's some actual functional differences between them. Hopefully, this saves you from buying one of those drives and building these systems in a less than optimal configuration. If you're interested in buying these drives in, from the home lab perspective, like the Intel Optane one, these are available on eBay still, but do watch my cash videos that you'll find linked in that right up because not necessarily everybody needs that. If you want it for experimenting, great, but make sure you need it before you spend money that you will not get a lot of benefit from on those. Not everything needs a cache. Not everything needs a log. Depends on the workload. That's why I have a whole different video on that topic. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to forums where you'll find that right up. And that's where you can connect with me and have a more in-depth discussion on this and other topics. And head over to lawrencesystems.com where you can connect with me on whatever socials you find me on there. All right, and thanks.